Hi community, how's it going? This is Santiago, aka Time to Shine, and I'm a commercial photographer, filmmaker, and drone operator based in Melbourne, Australia. I've been lucky enough to visit over 35 countries in the past seven years and document its people, landscape, and cultures. Today, I am partnering once again with Luminar Neo to show you my step-by-step -step approach when editing aerial photography. Luminar Neo is a powerful editing software combining AI tools helping us photographers to achieve high quality results in no time. So with no further ado, let's dive into it. Well guys, here we are once again in Luminar Neo. We'll be working on this image I captured in Catamarca in Argentina last year. This place is called Campo de Piedra Pomes and we took the advantage to fly up the drone and to capture this image of the textures and the silhouettes that they were shaped by the golden hour light at sunrise. So the whole point of this image is try to emphasize the contrast between lights and shadows. And the first thing we're going to do is to merge all the images together into a high dynamic range. Every time I shoot aerial photography, I use the auto exposure bracketing mode. This is because the camera sensors of the drones, they're not the same size and quality as a DSLR or mirrorless camera. So you're gonna select them all and then we're going to drag and drop them into HDR Merge. We're going to click on Merge over here, Continue, and Luminar Neo will do the heavy lifting for us. As we can see, we have the high dynamic range image and this will be the initial canvas to start working on. If we have a look, the first aspect I want to fix is a white balance. So you're gonna go to the Edit section, we're going to head over to the Develop panel and we're going to fix the white balance. There is too much blue and too much magenta at the moment. So we're gonna go with the yellows, probably a little bit less magenta over here. I think that's a good starting point. Next will be to adjust the exposure, the contrast, and also the blacks and the whites. I always bring down the exposure a little bit, down a notch to 0 0.2, 0 0.25, bring down the contrast as we're going to also adjust the tone curves and that's going to give us the contrast that we want and they're going to bring down the blacks and going to pull up the whites next step we're heading into the color panel we're going to bring down the saturation a little bit and we're going to start adjusting individually the hue the luminance and the saturations of each color so you're going to bring the yellows and the orange a bit more into the red. I want to bring the purple and the magenta towards the blue and the blue towards the cyan. Next step will be to go to the saturation. I want to get rid of all the magenta, all the purple. I want to bring down and desaturate a little bit the blues, which are cyans at this stage. And I want to emphasize a bit more the orange. So you're going to bring up the saturation just a tiny bit. This all according to your liking. These are probably the colors that you're going to see on my palette more often. But there isn't such a thing as right or wrong. You just have to experiment. You just have to spend hours editing and fine tune your style and your craft. With the luminance, I think we can bring down the blues a little bit just to get that extra contrast. And when it comes to color, I think that's it. And to finish it up, guys, I'm going to show you a tool which used to be very time consuming, but thanks to Luminar Neo, has become really accessible and easy to use for pretty much anyone. So you're going to go and use Dodge and Burn. For those who are not aware, this is basically a tool to brighten in the highlights and to darken the shadows. So what we're going to use, we're going to go into the lighten. You're going to choose a brush. You can select the size, the softness, and also the amount, which we're going to bring it up to 30 to start. And we're going to start painting into the highlights. Just make sure to take your time and to cover all of them. The more time you spend, the better is going to be the final result. Then we're going to choose the darken option. And we're going to do the opposite with the shadows. So we're going to paint all over the shadows just to darken them. Same as before, same settings and take your time. Make sure to cover all the shadows and all the dark parts of the image. And we're going to have a look at the before and the after. And one more tool which has been completely game changer for me is the upscale feature. And basically what we can do, we can scale up 
the file size up to four times. This means if you want to print a large canvas or if you want to license this image to a company and they require the high resolution, you're going to be able to give them a much greater size and you will be able to provide a higher quality image. So as simple as one click away, we're going to click on upscale. And then once again, Luminar Neo will do the heavy lifting for us. And this is the final size. Well, community, that's all for today. I hope this helped for your next editing session. And I will see you in the next one.